presidential historian Michael Beschloss on MSNBC with an important warning. I know you're a mother, I'm a mother, for all the mothers out there, and dads for that matter too. Take a listen, because the stakes are way higher than any of us knew. Listen. Chris, six nights from now, we could all be discussing violence all over this country. We could be six days away from losing our rule of law and losing a situation where we have elections that we all can rely on. In 50 years from now, if historians are allowed to write in this country, and if there are still free publishing houses and a free press, which, which I'm not certain of, but if that is true, a historian will say, what was at stake tonight and this week was the fact whether we will be a democracy in the future, whether our children will be arrested and conceivably killed. We're on the edge of a brutal authoritarian <laughs> system, and it could be a week away. Because people won't vote Democrat? Because this, Get your this is like that, uh, what is it, that Antoine guy that they did, the, they called him the, the bed intruder viral video where he's like, oh my gosh, hide your, hide your husbands, hide your wives, hide your kids because they're snatching everybody up in here. <laughs> he just did that politically. <laughs> that was that what that answer was. That was crazy. Oh. Nobody's like, oh if God. historians can write, who's blocking this? No. Who's doing this? No more press and you're, you're, all the children are going to be killed. <laughs> Oh my okay, gosh, everyone's going to die. Taking fear mongering to the living next together, mass level. hysteria. That is that hasn't <laughs> happened. It is not going to happen. These that that's what they're offering, Megan. To your point, that is exactly what they're offering instead of any kind of solution. That's what they're offering. Meanwhile, this you is, and I are just sitting here talking about it and chilling and just you know wondering why they're freaking out like this. Yeah, like divided government is really not that bad. A lot of Americans tend to prefer it, as yeah. a matter of fact. And by the way, it's guys like that who make. Uh, these these evil election deniers believe that the left is capable of anything. Right. If you put that guy in charge of a ballot box, and there are millions just like him who feel that way, right, who are, who are that untethered on the far left, if you put that guy in charge of a ballot box in a, in a swing district in Pennsylvania, in Georgia, right, what do you think he's going to do? Would you trust him? Yeah. I wouldn't. Especially Listen to if, how he's talking about the stakes. His kids are going to die if yeah. the right wins. I mean, think about it. If you genuinely believe that the lives of your children are at stake, and if people don't vote Democrat, they could die, that could actually make you act in a number of different ways that maybe aren't so cool. Yeah. I mean, if, when when the president sits here, President McUnity sits here and talks about lowering the rhetoric <laughs> or, or, or maybe kind of, you know, uh, moderating the tone a bit. I just, it's a wonder that they don't address, because there are so many people like this guy, some of them in elected office, they never take the time to address the words from these kinds of people. I mean, that's just, it's ridiculous. It is, it's incendiary. And it's almost like they want violence. He sounds like he wants violence. He wants something, anything in or th that can be used as leverage to get Democrats into office. They wouldn't have to do this. They wouldn't have to get emotional if they were just like a regular Democrat party that, you know, people kind of mm. grew up with in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yes. Um, half Remember those 90s. days? So um, he's not the only hysteric. That was MSNBC. But let's take a little meander over to the Mouse Network, ABC, <laughs> right? Owned by Disney, where now this kind of talk about Republican women is absolutely fine. I give you Sonny Hostin on The View, SOT 10. I read a, a poll just yesterday that white Republican suburban women are now going to vote Republican. Why? It's almost like roaches voting for raid. Oh, my God. I just remember those same females getting very, very upset when I called out women who used birth control as abortion and considering from Planned Parenthood's own publicly available statistics. Use, abor use abortion this, as birth control. Yeah, hidden, hidden on this thing called the Internet. I mean, women who use abortion as birth control. Uh, that's like the majority of Planned Parenthood's customers. And when I remarked on that, and this was in the context of the Herschel Walker thing, and we were talking about how you want to you want to win the seat. Democrats are very eager to win seats and control the Senate. So I don't feel that Republicans should have any same shame in admitting admitting the same thing. But it was interesting because talking about abortion as birth control on demand, taxpayer funded. Any criticism of that was considered to be uh, quote unquote moral rot from those women, but. 
when if you're a woman and you are exercising your empowered free choice, because I thought that that's what so-called feminism was all about, to be able to have choices even if they differ from the choice of another woman, the decision of a woman to vote Republican makes her a roach. I just, that's Only the, the that's, white and ones. And I noticed that the none of them had that. The white suburban ones. Sorry. Right. Oh, only the white suburban ones who are going to vote Republican. That's yeah, it. Everybody that? else is not a what roach. What is that with that? That's racist because there aren't any black women that vote Republican. It's disgusting. This is, Democrats have tried to trademark and patent everything from being female, being gay, being Hispanic, being Latino, being being a, a, a woman, being whatever, a, a black American, whatever. They've, they've tried to patent and trademark absolutely every single thing. This is why Joe Biden felt so confident in saying, well, if you don't vote for me, then you're not really black because that's kind of their no, party line. That- you're onto something. If she, if the, if the data, because I'm presume she's referring to the Wall Street Journal poll that came out yesterday, where yeah. they had an article or two days ago, saying that uh, white women had swung uh, blue to red, 27 percentage points in the last couple of months, and now are net positive towards the Republicans by 15 points. Uh, white suburban women. If that same poll had said black inner city women had swung to the Republican Party, let's say by 10 points, there is no way she'd be referring to them as roaches. That's bullshit. She feels fine taking a shot like this at white suburban GOP women, newly GOP and not, because uh, she knows she's going to get away with it. It's disgusting to analogize any human being, white, black, wh- whatever, but she's she loves to hit Republicans and she loves to hit female Republicans. And if they're white, so much the better. Yeah. Uh, as roaches now, that's not a bridge too far for ABC that wants us to go watch their funny little morning crew and go to their stupid little park. But if you're a white Republican woman, you're a fucking roach. Sorry, but that's disgusting what no, she it's said. it's offensive. It's offensive. And I think it betrays a number. Of, well, I, I first off, I think she sounds racist. Uh, it, it, that's the moral rot. If we want to have a discussion about moral rot in the society that we're still, it's 2022 and we're dividing people up by color of skin and ethnicity and everything else and and, and trying to, and, and blasting them if they're not voting for voting for how we want. But here's the other thing. When, when you look across the country and making your mom, you, we, you know, you've, you've dealt with the lockdowns, you've dealt with all of this stuff. When you see all of the parents and particularly the mothers that were standing up when their kids were being forcibly masked, when schools were locked down, when their kids were going through loneliness and they were suffering academically and losing all of this time in schools and everything else. And you had all of these parental groups, a lot of them ran by women of color. In fact, I've I've sp- spoken to, I don't even know how many moms at this point, uh, Muslim mothers, uh, Indian mothers, Asian mothers, white mothers, Hispanic mothers, black mothers. And s- not every single one of them are a you know, card carrying member of the RNC. A lot of them are Democrats. They were motivated by what is in the best interest of their children to vote Republican. People were voting for candidates like Glenn Youngkin because Glenn Youngkin provided a way out for their kids. He provided an opportunity for their children. This is we're seeing this all across the country. And so to reduce the struggle of American families to reduce the struggle of what mothers have been dealing with with their children for the past two plus years to a really insulting, racially charged put down like this on The View is inexcusable. It's insulting. And you know what? I think that she owes people an apology. Sonny Hostin owes people she an apology. Does. The View owe people an apology. This is ridiculous. She I don't want to hear any lectures from these apologize. broads about anything related to Herschel Walker or anybody else when they're out there screaming, calling women roaches because they're not voting the way that they want them to vote. I thought we went, you know what? Women have, we have our own minds. We are, we are not one unit. We all don't have to vote the same. And I'm going to be damned if I'll be put down the same way that you will, Megan, just because we want to, we think differently and vote differently. That doesn't make us roaches. That, that makes us not sheep. That's what it makes us. Oh, that's exactly right. She should be forced to apologize or she should be suspended from that show. It's absurd that Disney's going to let her get away with this. You may not compare women, any women, GOP or Dems, to roaches. And the fact that she feels comfortable doing that on a platform yeah. like ABC News tells you everything you need to know about that network. They need to step in or the judgment is on them as well. Is your business still using spreadsheets and emails to manage important sales commission? Is your support and operations staff stretched thin? Are your salespeople constantly trying to piece together the puzzle for what they're going to get paid for and what's potentially missing? Hassle. Well, this is where ClearComp comes in. 
ClearComp is a one-stop shop for your business to manage sales commission documentation like commission plan info, product info, and facts. It's basically a sales operations and sales enablement dream platform. ClearComp works seamlessly with your billing, CRM, ERP, and HR systems, all with the goal of helping your organization become more efficient and helping your sales team become more productive. Their dashboards and tools help you identify low-hanging fruit, what opportunities are hot, where you can improve, and as a salesperson, no more black box commission statements and no more hunting around for the latest and greatest decks and one-sheeters. Modernize your sales organization today by visiting clearcomp.com. That's C-L-E-A-R-C-O-M-P.com. Book a demo and tell them I sent you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.